What's up everyone, this is Puka bringing you the first round from the Kenosha, Wisconsin Battle Road between Ricky on the left and some dorky looking guy on the right who wears the same dumb red jacket to every single day. Oh wait, that's me. Yeah, so uh, I actually got to record my own match in the first round. I do apologize. The place was cramped. There was like a hundred people there. We were not expecting that. And so we just kind of scrambled to get the camera set up in time. We didn't really think I'd have enough space. And so I'm missing like the bottom half of the game. But we'll be able to work with it still. I'll guide you through it and it should be alright. Now Ricky is playing a Darkrai High Dragon deck. We've seen this be pretty successful at Battle Road so far. Definitely a tier 1 deck. And I am just playing a more straightforward Darkrai Sableye Terrakian deck. Cutting out the High Dragon Middleman and just going for consistency basically so if Ricky can get set up quickly um, he should be the favorite but my deck's theory is that you know if I can get set up more consistently which I should because you know stage twos are hard to set up sometimes um, I should have a good shot to win a lot of the time so it's gonna be a battle of me trying to outspeed him and hopefully he does not get set up in time. That's going to be my strategy. But if you're Ricky, he's just going to be going for his normal game plan and going from there. Now, we did see uh, Ricky just had a Dino and used Headbutt in the first turn for 10. Unfortunately, I got an N off my random receiver. So I had to go ahead and play that. I believe I had a Juniper in hand as well. But um, I had just too much stuff I didn't want to discard. So even though I'm giving him a new hand, uh, I think I would lose in the long run if he ever drew a supporter. So it's better off for me to just use N and go from there. So I did Ultra Ball a Dark Energy into the discard pile on the first turn, which is wonderful. That's exactly what you want to do. My hand is pretty bad, though. Um, I get an Ultra Ball and four Dark Energy, I believe, and an Enhanced Hammer. But this is the good part about Sableye. Um, I used that random receiver on the first turn. Even though I used N to get into a, I drew into a garbage hand, I'm just going to be able to use Junk Hunt, get my random receiver back, and all of a sudden I have a supporter for the next turn, even though my hand is really bad. So it gives me a chance to set up even if I draw badly off of one of my supporters. This is the advantage of running Sableye, which a lot of decks don't have. You know, like the, um,. The electric decks, they can't run this. Um, like the a lot of the other, basically anything not running dark energy can't run this. <laughs> so let's see what Ricky does this turn. Uh, looks like he gets a, another dark ride, two dark rides actually in play. An Eevee Light and a dark energy and a Bianca for four. So I'm starting to get a little scared. You know, if he drops a rare candy on high drag on this turn, I'm going to be really far behind. Uh, because odds are I'm not going to be able to Night Sphere this next turn. And, you know, he's got that Eevee Light at Dark Rye. If he gets a High Dragon out and he can start doing stuff, I'm going to be in some trouble. But he looks like he's just going to headbutt. Interesting decision on doing that instead of just retreating. Um, if I did pull off a Night Sphere this turn, it would be huge. I can knock out his Dino and go from there. And I think I would be in a tremendous position if I could somehow pull off a Night Sphere. Now, it would take, like, two Dark Patches. Or something like that, but you know, it could happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and Ultra Ball. Um, I don't know if I'm actually gonna grab anything and bench it. I could bench another Dark Rye here, and it looks like that's what I'm gonna do. But um, if he ever catches me, that could actually slow me down quite a bit. And I need to try to not put down too many Dark Rise without Eevee Lights because I don't run Max Potion, and he does. So I need my advantage to be okay. I have Eevee Light. He needs to be knocking out my Dark Rise in three hits, not two. Uh, because if he can knock them out in two hits, and he gets Max Potion, I'm just going to be done for. Uh, it's going to be a losing battle. But we'll see. I do draw my six. I uh, draw one Dark Patch, but not quite the second one that I needed. I also could have gotten an Energy Switch. That would have allowed me to get this turn two Night Spear as well. But it looks like I'm just going to have to settle for using the Dark Patch. And then Junk Hunt again, which isn't bad at all. Um, I also don't have a supporter for next turn, so I'm going to go ahead and use Junk Hunt just for the Dark Patch and the Random Receiver. And this is kind of scary for me at this point. 
I've given Ricky another new hand. If he can get the rare Candy High Dragon out this turn, he'll be the first one to use Night Sphere. And if he does that, uh, I, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. He's going to get the first knockout, he's going to have a full setup, and I'll have no damage on his board. So you can see just how important going first is in this format. Uh, it would have been a world of difference had I gone first, and then he only gets two turns so far. Maybe I can get a Night Spear before he evolves his stuff. Uh, it actually doesn't look like he has the cards to pull it off, though. So I could still be in an interesting position where he hasn't done anything yet. Uh, he plays a random receiver. He also had an N in hand. He probably just wants to get that in the discard pile in case he needs to junk hunt. And he actually puts the blend on to Sableye just for that reason. And he's probably going to play an N and go for that rare Candy High Dragon if possible. I've been somewhat fortunate that he hasn't been able to get anything going quite yet. He still could off of this N. You know, if he gets the rare candy in the stage 2, I'm going to be in a world of hurt. If not, though, I'm going to be just fine. He won't be able to Night Spear this turn. Um, and then if I get a catcher, I can knock out a dino, put 30 on the other one. And I need to target down those things because if he's able to get those high dragons into play and start moving energy around... Uh, I'm at a clear disadvantage because he's just doing the same thing I'm doing, except he gets max potion. Uh, I do have the Terrakian to kind of even the score a little bit, so I will have that at my disposal. But other than that, uh, I I don't have much working for me, and I'm definitely at a disadvantage if he can set up. So here Ricky will retreat to his dino, and then looks like he's going to Ultra Ball... And search for a Zwilist, I'm thinking. If there's one in his deck, he'll certainly evolve to that. And let's see. Now, um, I remember when I was playing this, I was wondering, he actually evolves... Okay, he just evolved the dino that he just played down this turn. Alright, so I actually questioned about this. I was like, I'm kind of tired, but did you just play that one down this turn? And... Turns out he did, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. I don't think it impacts the game that much, but he does get to evolve the um, the dino that he just put down this turn, and you can see there I'm pointing it out. Like, did you play that down this turn? I can't remember. And he's like, no, I think I played it down last turn. So, oops, but probably won't matter that much. <laughs> we'll see, though. All right, so I do have a catcher, and obviously I'm going to target down that Zwilus. Um, I... I want to force him to have the rare candy and high dragon in hand. So I will catch that out this turn. I don't have a dark patch quite yet. So I'm going to tool scrapper away the Eevee Light. That's really a big thing in this matchup. Uh, I need to make sure that I can discard his Eevee Light so that I can Night Spear and get two hit knockouts on his Dark Rise. Or one hit knockouts with Terrakian retaliating. Otherwise, I'm going to lose. There's no way around it. So really I'm banking on the fact that my Dark Rise will outlast his. That I can knock them out in two hits thanks to Tool Scrapper. And normally these kind of decks don't have space for too many Eevee Lights. They get two or three. Um, and it's tough to draw into them after you discard one or two. So he'll probably have two Eevee Lights in the deck. That's usually what we see. But uh, who knows. And uh, it looks like I get... A dark patch, so I will be able to go ahead and Night Spear this turn. So I'll get the first prize, I'll knock out the Zwilus, and hit the Dino for 30. And let's see, um, looks like I drew an Enhanced Hammer as well. So I can play that and discard the Blend off of his Sableye. I know you can't see it, but it's there. <laughs> uh, the Sableye is just off screen, it had a Blend on it. And I discarded that with Enhanced Hammer, just want to get that off the board for later times. Um, one... One of the other ways I try to even the score in this matchup, since I don't have the High Dragon, is uh, Enhanced Hammer. You can discard the Blend Energy. Some people actually play Prism as well. So it's it's really nice to be able to just deny your opponent that kind of stuff. Uh, take away their options to use things like Dragon Blast with High Dragon. And uh, some people play Prism as well with Terrakian in this deck. So it's really good to discard the Prism as well and prevent them from using any big things like Terrakian. 
So it looks like Ricky Ultra Balls and he discards a rare candy as well. So he will get his high dragon out this turn. And this means he's going to start being able to do all sorts of stuff. And then he's got a Juniper as well. So a pretty good hand from him off of the latest end I just played. I think we've played like four ends between us so far. Uh, it's actually a point of concern for me. I've played three ends up to this point. Usually you want to save one or two for the late game to try to deny your opponent you know, having a bunch of options like Max Potions, Catchers, Dark Patches, all that kind of stuff, Eviolites. Um, so, it's actually a really big pain in the butt to have to use all my ends early on. There's only one more left in my deck. And we'll see if that comes up at all later on in the game. And there you go, I draw my fourth one. So, I really, really don't want to play this. Um, like, I... The last thing I want to do is play this end right now because I want to save one for later on in the game just in case I need to disrupt him. If he can keep building his hand up, say he uses Sableye and Junk Hunts later on in the game, if I'm out of ends, I can't stop him from using all the trainers he gets. So I'm actually going to hold on to this end for now. There's not really a whole lot of stuff I need. I might need a catcher next turn so I can catch out the Hydragon and go for the knockout on that. If I can take that out of play, I'm going to be very happy with my position. Just because uh, I will have all sorts of advantages over him. I'll have the Eevee Lighted Dark Rise. I'll take away his uh, fancy Dark Trance Max Potion options. And really, uh, High Dragon is the key in the matchup. If he can get it into play and keep it there, I'm probably going to end up losing. But if not, I should end up winning. So now Ricky is just going to retreat to his other Dark Rise with no damage. And Night Spear me again. And you can see this is the difference. If he has the Eevee Light on his Darkrai, I'm only doing 70. That's a 3-hit knockout. Which is what he's doing to me. But here, I'm getting 2-hit knockouts. So, he has to retreat his Darkrai in fear of being knocked out by my Night Spear. And so, he it puts more pressure on him. He needs a uh, Max Potion more often. And I think eventually I should win out this battle... If, um, you know, if things don't change, if he doesn't get any more Eevee Lights, or if he doesn't get Tool Scrapper. I don't know if he plays it. Not every deck plays Tool Scrapper. Like I said, Hydragon is a deck that needs to fit in a lot of stuff, so he might just not have it. And now, Ricky, he catching up my other Darkrai. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. He's kind of softening up both of them, maybe for a later play. I'm not too sure. What he's going to do, maybe he's just softening them up for a Dragon Blast later on in the game. And here, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to attach an energy to my Darkrai and play an end because I really, you know, even though I did not want to play the end here, I do want to draw a catcher this turn. So, um, I value being able to draw the catcher this turn over anything else. If I can do that, I just bring out his High Dragon. Boom. It's gone. Dark Trance, out of the question. And I should be in a tremendous position. If I don't draw the catcher, well, I just gave him a fresh hand of six. <laughs> Played my last end. And I don't know where I'm going to go from there. Um, I'm not in a terrible position because I can just hit the active for 90 and then the Shaman for 30. And then all of a sudden, like everything on his board is in range of being knocked out by Night Sphere. So we'll see if I draw the catcher here. And really it's going to come down to whether... Or how many max potions Ricky can draw. I don't think he's played a single one yet. So that is good for me. Uh, I'm going to take a look at my discard. See if I can actually dark patch. But I don't think there's any more dark in my discard pile. If there is, I can get one back. But there's not. So I'm going to hit the active for 90. And the Shaman EX for 30. So I'm up a prize. But uh, it's still a fragile position. Because I have so much damage on my Dark Rise right now. And Ricky, he won't be able to get a knockout this turn, but uh, eventually these hits will add up. And if he has max potions, he's just going to wipe the damage off my board. And there we go, there's a max potion on the High Dragon. Uh, that's a pretty good decision, seeing as, you know, he just took away my option to get rid of his High Dragon. And oh, another max potion. So this is really brutal. Just like that, you know, he had 
four Pokemon in play that were heavily damaged, all in range of Night Spear knockouts. And now they're just fully healed. <laughs> this is really looking bad for me at this point. And he's actually going to retreat to Sableye. And it looks like he's just going to move all his energy to Hydreigon because that's the safest option. He's going to be able to Junk Hunt again. Probably get a Max Potion. And he can even get two Max Potions if he wants. But he might get a random receiver because he has no supporter in hand. So you can see just like that how everything just turned around. I was in tremendous position there to go ahead and win the game. But just like that, he damage is healed off his board, and I have to work that much harder to win this game. Now, on the positive side, that Shaman EX is still there for me to pick off. Um, I believe I'm going to actually go for that. If I get a catcher, uh, I want to take that out of play just because I have Terrakian in my deck, and I want him to be like the cleaner. I want to plow through the Dark Rise if I ever get to that point. So, I want to have that option. But it doesn't look like I have a catcher. Uh, they are eluding me at this point. And this is just really unfortunate. I've only played one so far, but, you know, this is just what happens when there's no junk arm in the format. You don't draw your catchers when you need to sometimes. So I'm just going to be satisfied to take the Sableye knockout, which is also fine, actually. I'm going to hit the Hydreigon for 30, and then what I'm going to do is, you know, there are still two EXs on his field that are damaged to the point where I can knock them out with Night Spear. I can take out the Shaman with a Catcher and Night Spear, and then all I have to do is get a Terrakian and retaliate one of those Dark Rise, and I will win the game. So overall, you know, things are still looking up for me. It's not the worst position in the world, uh, and... You know, Ricky, if he gets a Blend Energy this turn, he will get a knockout with Dragon Blast. And then I really need to get a catcher to kind of keep up with the pace here. But um, he's actually going to catcher up my Darkrai with uh, the two energy on it with no damage. He has a random receiver still in hand, I think, and an N. So I'm not sure why he decided to go for that one. He could have played the N and then tried to get a Blend Energy. Um, yeah, he sees I have a ton of cards in hand, so he's going to go ahead and play the N. So I'll go to four cards, and he will go to six. Uh, if he just waits and draws a Blend, he can actually knock out one of my Dark Rise. But it looks like he's going to be content to just go ahead and Night Spear me this turn. It will be a two-hit knockout on this Dark Rise because it does not have an Eevee Light. And it looks like he'll be able to knock out the Sableye as well, if he wants to do that. So he's got a, a fairly solid game plan from here on out. You know, he just has to knock out a couple Dark Rise with, uh, with Dragon Blast. And if he draws some Max Potions, I mean, there's two in his discard pile at this point, because he did play the other one again. If he draws some Max Potions, he should just be able to outlast me, which... You know, that's the name of the game when you're playing High Dragon. And at this point, you know, I did draw a Charon off of my four cards, so that is fortunate. I do have all four Junipers left, I believe. So I do have those options available to me. And I am fortunate enough to draw my Catcher, finally. And I will be able to knock out a Shaman this turn. Um, I have a Terrakian in hand as well. Usually you want to wait to bench that, and I do get a third Eevee Light. And uh, <laughs> I go to attach it, and I'm like, uh, too lazy, I'll just leave it there. I'm going to retreat him anyway. Uh, so, he's played a lot of catchers so far. So I am just fine with benching my Terrakian, saying, you know what? You probably don't have catcher. Whenever you take a knockout, I'm just going to be there to retaliate. And usually this is not what you want to do, but I'm just going to do it this time. Uh, I'm going to send up my Dark Rider that has the most damage on it. I don't think that actually makes a big difference, but I do that. And I have a Juniper in hand as well. And let's just Night Spear for two more prizes. I'm now down to two prizes. And he has two big Dark Rise targets on board. He does draw a Catcher. So we'll see if he decides to go with that. Um, he could Catcher and maybe Dragon Blast my Terrakian to get that out of play. And then he loses his High Dragon though. So really, I've put him in a tough situation with the Terrakian. If he ever takes a knockout, all it takes is a catcher retaliate. Game over. I only have two prizes left. 
So that's going to be it. Uh, if he goes after the Trakian, that means he's neglecting my Dark Rise, which means I should be able to win just with Dark Rise. <laughs> so even though I have 90, 80, and 70 damage on my Dark Rise, there's no way for him to efficiently knock those out unless he plays a Tool Scrapper, which he certainly could. Well, that is one thing I'm still scared of, but uh, at this point I just kind of take the risk and say, all right, you probably don't play Tool Scrapper. I've seen a lot of stuff so far. You've been through a lot of cards and you still haven't played one. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume you don't play it at all. Uh, it's fairly uncommon for a High Dragon decks to play Tool Scrapper. They usually go with Eevee Light instead and just say, you know what, I don't care about Garbodor. <laughs> uh, and now Ricky, he is just powering up his High Dragon, it looks like. He's got a catcher in hand. He could target down my Terrakian. Uh, or he can knock out the active Darkrai for two prizes. Now, if he knocks out the active, he's just going to get Night Speared and lose his High Dragon. So this is kind of a bad situation for him regardless. Uh, if he Junipers, he loses his two catchers. And so all he can really do is knock out the active, take his two prizes. And at this point, all I need is a catcher and I win the game. Even if I don't get the catcher, I should just be able to get a knockout and win the game. <laughs> So I draw a Prism. I'm actually going to, I think I'll energy switch up to the active. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to enhance Hammer because I'm going to Juniper this turn. Um, yeah, I'm going to drop down my other track in with a Prism just so I have another one ready. Because I only need the two energy to retaliate. I'll energy switch up to the active and then Juniper. And here we go. Catcher to win. And it looks like I got it. I'll just be able to retaliate a Darkrai for the win and that will be round one so somehow I was victorious uh, tough game for Ricky he got a slow setup and then uh, you know once once he did I had a bunch of damage on his board and then Terrakian just came in for the last couple prizes there with a big retaliate so uh, that was a really close game for the first one we'll have plenty more matches here from the Kenosha Wisconsin Battle Road hope you guys enjoyed this match I have been Puka, and I'll see you guys for the next one.